order for God, in order for God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you have not the room to receive, he has to stretch your capacity. Uh, he has to take you into territory that is foreign to you. Uh, if it's if it's domestic to you, you're too acquainted with it. Uh, but he has to take you into territory that is fukumashana, and to take you into territory that is foreign to you in order to increase your capacity to handle what he's about to release in your life. And I don't know exactly under the sound of my voice that I'm going to move here tonight. I don't know exactly who under the sound of my voice tonight uh, has been in a very tight place. So don't go shy. You've been being stretched here recently, but I promise you, if you can just believe that that stretching had purpose tonight, God said, I'll drop something in your life. God said, I'll release Oh God, if you can just believe huh, that your suffering has not been in vain. I know you've been on the merry-go-round for quite some time, but God said, huh, if you can believe that I didn't make a mistake, if you can believe I didn't miss, if you, didn't, if you can believe huh, that this one didn't catch me by surprise, huh, God said, I'll release something into your hands. He come no more shy. Somebody can get it by 12 midnight if you pray. He come to this shade. God said, if you believe me, that this was not in vain, that I did not miss, that this didn't catch me off guard, I promise you, I will redeem your suffering. You, yeah, you've been being stretched. You've been being stretched. You've been in here. Oh my Jenny. What's on me tonight? He can't be shy. You've been in a tight place. Hit up my shy. Oh my dear shy. The God said trials work with patience. And people shut in the high. And patience experience. And experience hope. And I want you to know tonight uh, that everything that you have suffered, everything you've endured, everything that God has stretched you to believe him for, uh, ought to give you hope to believe uh, that he that hath me God uh, will put all in you. It's faithful to fulfill until the coming of Jesus Christ. God said real faith cannot, oh my Shadia, cannot be unlocked in familiar territory. I have to take you out. Mm. I'm trying tonight, Pastor. I'm trying, baby. I really am. I'm trying. I have real faith. Real faith takes you out of where you are too familiar. Uh, God said, I have to drop you into foreign territory. You're the most shy if you really don't get stretched enough to believe me. And so that's what he did. That's what he did with Abraham. And then with Sarah, uh, he told the two of them, he said, I'm going to give you a child. You shall conceive, Pastor Bishop, and bear child, Jacoby. You shall conceive and bear child, Bible said. Uh, that's faith uh, that Sarah Lord help me tonight Sarah and Abraham did not believe that they would conceive and bear the child Bible said they didn't believe to the point that they laughed at the angel when the angel said that they would conceive well the Bible said somewhere around 10 chapters after the release uh, that they had conceived and bore child the history of the time educates us about the fact that men and women did not come together they did not come to know one another they did not uh, they were not intimate one with another uh, unless they intended specifically to reproduce, to conceive and birth out a child. Uh, and so I wondered and I pondered that thing in prayer and I asked God, I said, how is it then that they conceived the child uh, uh, if they did not believe it? And God said, that's what real faith does. Uh, real faith keeps your actions in motion when your emotions have lost the battle. Uh, real faith keeps you everything about your body performing uh, it keeps your spirit in the driver's seat uh, when your soul has given up 
talking to nobody. Real faith keeps your spirit in drive when your soul has given up. Your soul, your mind, your will, or your emotions. When your mind, your will, or your emotions are Jacoby, I don't know what happened when you lifted up your hands just now. But God said, I want you to turn them the other way because I'm releasing something right into your hands. I don't know who my child I don't know where your habitat is right now But I just saw you lay your head in a whole new place He got no more shut up Y'all better come on out of here tonight It's almost shot It did the mouth so I'm about to make you lie down in green pastures He gave Oh 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 Come on now. Oh 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 real faith keeps your spirit in drive. Hey, oh, 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 Real faith keeps your spirit in drive. When your seeking is shy, when your soul has given up, when your mind, your will, and your emotions have clocked out, they have gone down for the count. Something wakes up in your faith, and it don't have permission to wake up until your soul is dead. Yeah, the real faith, the uh, the real unhinged, unwavering faith of your spirit can't come into action. It can't it doesn't have permission to be activated uh, until something close to it is dead uh, and it has to contrast it. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Lord. Uh, real faith. He come out shy. Uh, you cannot appreciate light uh, until you have experienced darkness. Uh, and it is your ability uh, to contrast your experience in darkness uh, with the blessing of illumination uh, that causes you to appreciate light. Uh, God said real faith uh, cannot be appreciated uh, until something close to it is dead. Uh, until something that has the ability uh, to influence you uh, needs to be resuscitated. Uh, faith has no real assignment. Uh, but when something around you uh, is on life support, uh, faith kicks in with resurrection power uh, and says, though everything around me look dead, uh, my faith will come in and cause there to be life even in a death situation. And so that's where Sarah was. Everything about her had Hikushai. She had counted as dumb. But something about her faith, something about Abraham's faith, continued to get in the bed. And Kiki Kishiki Roboshai. And continued to come together. Even though they didn't think it was possible. But faith has the ability to take what your mind just Justified as impossible uh, and make it possible. Uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong pinned a song way back in the 80s uh, that said, I have the faith uh, to expect the incredible, uh, to move the unmovable, uh, to see the invisible, uh, to reach the unreachable, uh, to fight the unbeatable. Uh, she had faith to conquer anything. Uh, you've got to understand uh, that real faith uh, remains undefeated because real faith has the ability to conquer anything that comes against them. Yes. And so that's where Sarah and Abraham were. They did not believe uh, that they could bear uh, and conceive the child. Uh, but they continued getting in the bed uh, and fighting that battle. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, real faith has no assignment uh, until it is contrasted by something uh, that does not believe God. Uh, that's why the Bible came to us uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 12 tonight uh, and said, so from one man, uh, 
though he was physically as good as dead, there have sprung descendants whose number is as the stars of heaven and countless as the innumerable sands on the seashore. Talking about Abraham, because everything in his body, his loins, were as good as dead, but when it said physically as good as dead, but what physics will count out, and what science will count out, and what statistics will count out, and what the natural terra firma will count out, God said you've got the ability in the realm of the spirit to command that thing to produce. I can't hit nobody. Faith will keep something alive when the doctor has signed the death certificate. Yeah. Uh, and signed the death certificate. Uh, I used to go to church with a woman uh, that the death certificate was signed uh, and her toe had been tagged uh, and she got up off of the table. Uh, real faith uh, will keep it alive. Uh, real faith uh, will keep something living uh, when everything around it uh, said that it's impossible. Uh, when everything around it uh, said that it could not exist. Uh, when everything around it, uh, said that it could not be done. Uh, your faith will call that thing back into life. Uh, he come to the shy. Uh, you might have to pray it through some nights. Uh, you might have to consecrate your gift for it. Uh, you might have to believe him in some tight situations. Uh, but real faith yeah. uh -huh. yeah. has the ability to keep something alive. And so the Holy Ghost is unlocking real faith. But the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. And he said, Kimani, he said, you've been educating them. He told me in prayer today. He said, you've been educating them about faith in me. But they don't have personal faith. I said, God, what do you mean by that? As long as we believe you, it's all right. God said, no, sir, my son, you are mistaken. He said, it is not enough to just believe me, but you've also got to believe me in you. Yeah. And where the devil... Mm -hmm, where the devil uh, pops most of us out of real faith uh, is not because uh, he causes us to doubt God's ability, uh, but he causes us to doubt uh, that God would do it for us. Uh, see, I can believe God for your healing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I can believe God to provide for you. Uh, I can believe God for your ministry. Uh, I can support your vision all day long. Uh, but there's another level of confidence uh, that is required in the Holy Ghost uh, if you go believe God for you. Uh, he said in prayer, he said, son, he said, what did Paul say? Paul said in Philippians, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. It wasn't enough for Paul to know God could do it. Uh, he had to know that God could do it and use him to manifest it. Uh, and so the Holy Ghost said uh, that the reason some of y'all uh, get talked out of your faith assignment uh, is because you believe God can produce in everyone's life but yours. Yeah. And so it's the trick of the enemy uh, because the enemy uh, can't stop God from calling you. Uh, but what he can do uh, is try to infiltrate your mind uh, and convince you to believe uh, that you're incapable of being called. Just like we talked on Sunday uh, with the woman who was bound over for 18 years. Uh, and the Bible said she was bound over in her predicament. Uh, and Jesus called her unto him. Uh, he called her and nothing about her situation had changed. Uh, but Jesus found it necessary uh, not for him to leave where he was uh, and go to the woman. Uh, but he had to dispatch the call uh, so that she could come to him uh, even with her bowed over posture. The Holy Ghost wants you to know that just because you still wrestling with a few things didn't stop the fact that I called you. He kind of shy. The Holy Ghost needs you to know tonight that you still got 
power to produce this thing. I know you feel like you're too old. I know you feel like you've got too many issues. I know you feel like you lost too much time. I know you feel like you don't have enough money. I know you feel like nobody in your family ever has. And so it would seem unprecedented if you did. But the Holy Ghost said, I called you in before. Everything in your situation changed. I called you in the midst of your situation. I called you with the low credit report. I called you with the sickness in your body. I called you with that thorn in your flesh. I called you with the unprecedented of your family. I called you in the midst of the fact that your situation would disqualify you. But God said to me about that nameless woman, he said, I am He said, I called her to me because I wanted her to understand that if she changed her position, I would change her posture. I wish I had three people. Thank you, baby. Hey, if you she, I've got four now. He said, if she would change her position, then I would change her posture. You've got to understand that something about the will of God is given permission to activate in your life when you trust him enough to move. He got my shy. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I'm going to move anyhow. I don't know, can't shut an eye. I don't know how it's going to manifest. I've never seen it done before. My hands have never touched it, but I'll move anyhow. And if I change my position, God will stand me up and change my posture. Everything that had me bent over, everything that had me bowed over, everything that had me having convulsions, God will straighten it up.
to be a prophet in the nation. Here it is right here in the Bible. I'm going to read it for you so you don't call me a liar. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. That happened in verse 5. By the time we got to verse 11, uh, by the time we got to verse 10, uh, the Holy Ghost said, uh, the Bible said, uh, that I have sent you over the nations uh, and over the kingdoms uh, to root out, to pull down, uh, to destroy and to throw down, uh, to build and to plant. Uh, look at verse 9. Uh, verse 9 said, uh, and the Lord put forth his hand over my mouth uh, and said, I have called you. He called him in verse 5 and by verse 9 he had put his hand over his mouth to stop his excuses all you got is four verses to give an excuse but if you don't get over yourself by verse 9 God will just put his hand over your mouth either you gonna go where I called you or you gonna stay stagnant but you gotta believe that what I called you to I'll grace you through I called you in verse 5. By verse 9, I don't have time to debate it anymore. And you've been wrestling for the last 12 years. Am I going to answer the call? Am I going to do what he said? I wonder if he meant it. No, 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 no. When you got a real bona fide anointing, you don't have 11 and 12 years to be questioning God. You got four verses. So I don't, don't have time for it. <laughs> then he said in verse uh, number eleven. Come on, uh, come on. He said, "Moreover, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou?" So he called him in verse five. Right. Yeah. Shut his mouth in verse nine. By verse eleven, he said, "Answer me, what you see." <laughs> That's it's right. time to work. It's time to work. Wow. That's right. Calling in verse 5. Stop your excuses, verse 9. By verse 11, I want you to have produced an answer. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So you got two verses to figure it out. Uh, he said, he said, so uh, the reason that some of us uh, uh, disqualify ourselves from real faith uh, is because we, we talk ourselves out uh, of our ability to be used and to be called of God. All right. Because there is a Meshah, prayer, prophet's reward over you. He said, Hidamasha. He said, because the call of God and a real faith assignment ensues a battle between your spirit and your soul. Because the call goes out to your eternal. Your obedience is subject to your soul. I can call your spirit all day. But it is your soul that has the responsibilities to subject to answering me. Wow. That's good, sir. My Lord. Mm. Wow. It's your soul that is burdened with answering me. Jesus. Your spirit hears me, but your soul has to answer me. <laughs> you better walk through. Mm -hmm. And so, what the enemy does is gives you soulish distraction. Mm. You better walk through. Walk through. I'll distract your mind, your will, your emotions until you're too wrapped up in your soul to journey and answer in your spirit. So, if I keep interrupting your sleep, 
If I keep giving you anxiety, you'll tell yourself you're too unstable to birth this thing out. You'll tell yourself you need help. You'll tell yourself you can't do it alone. But before God ever manifests any major move, he always calls you by yourself. I never saw God in the word call a group of people. When he commissioned Noah to build the ark. He told Noah. When he when he called Moses to go into Pharaoh, he caught Moses at a bush by himself. Told Moses, I don't have time for your excuses. Moses said, but I got a I got a speech and put him in a stutter. God said, I don't have time for that. He said, I called you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bible said that Jacob wrestled with the angel all night. But the verse that precedes the wrestling says Jacob found himself alone with God. Any major move of God in the world never starts with a company, it starts with a person. And so the devil will inhibit you uh, and remand you to stagnation by making you think that you can't accomplish and achieve the will of God to, uh, without having galvanized a group of people behind you. But God said, it is the fact that you answer me that will give you the influence to attract people. You'll attract what you need when you answer me. Wow, that's good. But if you talk yourself out of the answer for not having what you think you need, you have alleviated your ability to attract it. Right, right. That makes sense. That's good. You have to have confidence in your ability to manifest what God said. God said, that's where my people are being talked out. Because they believe me, but you don't believe me for you. I can pray for you all night. I can sow hundreds of dollars into your vision, but God said, why you can't register your business? Why you can't believe in your ministry? How come you feel like everybody is anointed but you? What scarred you to believe I could use everybody but you? Come on, sir. He said, somewhere along the line, there has been something uh, that has planted a seed in your mind uh, to think that everybody else was more qualified than you. What happened to you? I need you to soul search and figure out where you accepted a curse of what you would never become. Where did you put on the thing you were supposed to go beyond? Where did you zip up and fasten the garment you were supposed to take off? Somebody put something out of the atmosphere and you grabbed it. You took it on. And now it has become a part of your belief concerning you. I remember... I was preaching one time some years ago. Uh, it was about four, four or five-ish years ago, um, and I was I preached and, and and the Lord had really had His way, and I had was at this church and there was a, someone I greatly, 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 greatly respect, uh, and I came off the pulpit. Literally right off the pulpit. You could ask my wife; she was right there. I came right off the pulpit, and the person said to me. Um, person said to me, well, you real anointed. 
in the spirit. Uh, but you don't have any credibility in the natural. You need to get yourself like a degree or figure out what you're going to do with school or something because all the spiritual stuff don't matter. So I said, oh, okay. And so, you know, I smiled and kept on moving. But then I realized later on, like last year, right. that I had taken that on. Exactly. And so anything about my ministry, mm -hmm. I didn't give credence to. Right. Because I said, that doesn't matter because I don't have my degree yet. Right, exactly. And so the Lord rebuked me in prayer and he said, where did you take that on? He said, why did you wear that? Now you have talked yourself out of my hand moving in your life because of what somebody with no degree said to you. No, no degree. No degree. How do you take on persons who have critique and no credibility? Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny how people will have critique and no credibility? None, none. Criticism and no contribution? None. Criticism and no contribution? Can, can, can pick everything about your situation, but ain't willing to help you change it. <laughs> I remember I was at a service one time. I'm finished hollering for the night. I was at a service one time. You can ask my wife, Lord, help me tonight. Then I told y'all on Sunday, I really am crazy. Uh, and they were taking up an offering. And uh, I went to this service. I didn't know nobody at this church. I had never been there. I had just gone because my wife said, go with me to support so-and-so. I said, okay. We went. They were taking up an offering. I didn't have no money. I didn't. I genuinely did not have any money. And uh, uh, the the it was, <laughs> it was a husband and wife. And the wife had preached. The wife had prophesied. The wife had worked the altar. And the wife um, wanted to raise the offering. And uh, she was raising it, in fact, uh, because somebody at that church was about to have surgery, and she had two young children. And she was leaving the children behind with like their godmother or somebody for like two months or so. And the wife wanted to raise a $5,000 offering. Uh, and so she asked for people to stand with her. She gave a thousand and she asked people to stand with her and give money towards the offering to take care of the two babies while the mom was having surgery. Really beautiful. Um, I didn't have any money. So uh, they had taken the offering and the husband out of order, starts <laughs> going around the church asking each person individually, how much are you going to give? Literally, paper and pen, going row to row. How much you going to give? How much you going to give? How much you going to give? Give it here. Asking for the money. When people said they didn't have it, he said, well, what day are you going to stop back by the church and drop it off when you get paid? Jesus. So I saw him on the other side of the church. I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> you know I got a diagnosis. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> and so, before he finished the first section of the church, the wife had met the bowl from the pulpit. She met it. Wow. It was over with. <laughs> Surely... That stopped the offering. <laughs> no. 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 Mr. No Ministry kept going <laughs> to keep getting the offer. I told y'all I'm crazy. God help me tonight. Forgive me. He got a ministry somewhere. Um, and so he kept going to get the offering. So he came over to me and he asked me, did I have my offer? So I said, it's kind, sir. I said, I've given what I could in the general offering uh, and the speaker's offering. Um, however, I don't have anything else to give to the family in need. I do apologize. 
I'm sitting like the third, fourth row of the church. So he says, he goes back and forth, and I tell him I ain't have, I ain't have. So finally he goes and asks my wife, she was my girlfriend at the time. And so he asks her, and so she said, I don't have it, I've given him the general offering, the speaker's offering, your wife got my money, I don't have it. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't have any more to give to the family in need. So he proceeds to ask her, you know, when you gonna give, when you gonna give? And so I stepped in, and so I said, ah, kind sir. Um, she said she doesn't have it. I said, so grace and peace. And he said, grace and peace? <laughs> See, now I'm trying to make it now. calls a scene. Because <laughs> he faced up on me and said, well, if you get loud, I will get loud right back. That my whole she under had. And so I said, grace and peace. And so he said, grace and peace. Some peace, Bishop. I said, We don't have to. He said, Why well, ain't you a preacher? I said, I said, Yes, sir, I am. He said, You don't have, you're not going to give to them? I said, Bishop. I said, It's not that I won't give it. I don't have it to give right now. And so I had on that particular day, I looked good. I had on, thank you. I had on a black shiny jacket and black and silver shiny pants. I was well kept, to know who. Yeah, you were. Um, but see, I have, like some people I know, a peculiar anointing. Mm -hmm. And I will make uh, Salvation Army look like Neiman Marcus. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'll make the Goodwill look like Nordstrom. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'll make the consignment shop look like Lord and Taylor. I can't get no back. And so, uh, he said, well, you came in here dressed all snazzy. He said, you don't have no money? You a preacher? Sitting all up by the front? So I said, Bishop. I said, you know, I said, these clothes are old. I said, I can't button this jacket. If you're going to be honest, it's too small. And if I were to pull the tail of, of the jacket, you would see the ever so slight tear in the fabric. I said, so, if you have something to say about my clothing, I would suggest you sew it to me so I can buy some that actually fit. You know he left me alone. But people have critique but no contribution. You can talk all about my situation, but you ain't gonna put nothing in. So we wear it. That was my point of the whole story. We wear what somebody else says. And God said, the moment you wear the word of man before you wear the call of God, you've done your faith a disservice. Oh my God. Somebody told you you was too old and you wore it. Y'all know Joyce Meyer didn't become who she was until she was 45 years old. Mm -hmm. Now she preaches in stadiums all across the world. And she didn't start preaching until she was 45 years old. <coughs> You're never too late to be what God called you to be. That's right. But don't dare take on what somebody else said before you take on what God said. Amen. Don't you let them tell you you can't go back to church because of what you did. God said, I'm married mm, even unto the backslide. And the moment you wear what man says before you wear what God says, you've done your faith a disservice. So this culminating session tonight on faith, the Lord wants you to know that I don't need you just to believe me, but I need you to believe me in you. Yeah. First John 4 and 4 has no power if you don't believe it. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you don't believe greatness is in you, yeah. that has no power.
has no power. Yeah. And baby, what I do believe is greatness is in me. Mm -hmm. And I can't be dissuaded from that. Mm -hmm. It was not always that way. It was not always that way. That's why I don't let nobody take my confidence now. Because yeah. I had to die for it. I had to fight it. Let me release this and I'm going to get out of here. The Bible said in Ezekiel 37, Pastor, five minutes, I'm finished. The Bible said in Ezekiel 37, the hand of the Lord was upon me. Verse 1. And he brought me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. And he caused me to pass round about them. And behold, there were very many human bones in the open valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. The Lord said unto me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I was in prayer, the Lord said, my people are where Ezekiel was. I said, what do you mean? We're in the valley of dry bones. He said, yes, but why are they there? I said, well, Ezekiel was in the valley of dry bones so that he could, you know, bring them back to life. It was his assignment to bring that that was dead back to life. And God said, that was not the point of this text. The point of this text was not so that Zeke, Ezekiel, just so that Ezekiel to, would bring to life what was around him. But it was to strengthen Ezekiel's confidence to know he had the resurrection wow. power within him. Wow. I didn't find that out until I paid attention to the first verse that said the hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out in the spirit and dropped me in the valley. And many of y'all have been feeling like you're in a dead place. And God said it's to prove to you that you have what it takes to resurrect it. That's why I didn't accept Ezekiel's answer. God asked Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel said, you know. God said, I didn't ask you that. He said, prophesy to the bones. It's not about what I know. That's right. You don't have any uncertainty or insecurity about my abilities. It's yours that you have no confidence in. So sometimes the hand of God is still upon you. But God will orchestrate you into a place that will prove you. Not to him. But to prove yourself to you. You have to know you have what it takes. You have to know that all this faith we've been learning about, you can produce. You have to know that. And if you don't know it, that's why faith can't be taught or imparted. Because you have to know it in you. I've got what it takes to produce the work of the Lord. I've got what it takes to carry what God said. I have what it takes to work out the promises of God. The promises of God are yea and amen. But you got to know that you can push it out. I love y'all. Thank y'all for hearing me this last few weeks. Grace and peace be unto you.